Hey everyone and welcome to another Star Citizen video. My name is Scary Spikes and in today's video we'll be talking about the Drake Cutter. It's a utilitarian entry level ship new from Drake Interplanetary and if you found the other ones on the roster not to be to your liking then this one might be right up your alley. Also, some things just never change. All right, so let's head over to the pledge store momentarily here as we take a look at different ways that you can acquire this ship. Now, unfortunately, the ship is not available in game just yet and will be available, generally speaking, after about two quarterly patches or six months from the date that it was released on the pledge store. At least that's been CIG's pattern as of the last few years and the way that they've released their ships. So let's go ahead and uh, go over how you can get this ship. Now you can uh, head over to the Robert Space Industries uh, website, click on Pledge Store on the top of your screen, and then click on Game Packages. And this is going to be the first way that you can acquire the ship it, because it is available in the Holiday Game Package here. Now it is War Bond, so for those of you who are brand new and uh, don't know what that is, it basically means that you need to spend brand new money to acquire this ship. Now, uh, War Bond is uh, not a big deal for people that are brand new to the game because you'll be spending new money as you won't have any store credit as your account will be brand new new uh, to purchase your game package and you will need a game package in order to play the game and so this is usually not a big deal for people that are a little bit more established stay with me uh, we will take a look at the options available for you in just a minute so if we have a look inside this little combo here uh, for $51 you do get a little discount here you do also get a little bit more insurance on your ship than you would if you were to purchase standalone uh, which would offer you uh, only six months insurance if you were using store credit or if you were using new money just to purchase the standalone ship as part of the war bond deal, then you do get lifetime insurance with that as well, which means once the game launches, the insurance goes live and you never lose insurance on that ship, which means you never have to worry about replacing your ship if it goes boom, which it very likely will. So this is what's available here. You can read through this or pause the video if you like. There are other game packages available if this is not your thing, but we are talking about the cutter today and this is going to be one way to get into that if you are a brand new player. Speaking of which, if you are a brand new player, do make sure to use my referral code. I'll have that link down in the description below. You can use the code itself uh, when signing up for a brand new account. It'll give you 5,000 extra UEC absolutely free. You can also just click on the link and that'll take you directly to a sign up page with my referral code already put in for you. It does help me out and I do very much appreciate it. And uh, it will help you out with some extra cash to get you started. And now for those of you who are a little bit more established in the game, there are a few options for you to purchase this ship as well. Again, can't do it in the game just yet, but we do have a few options here. And as you can see, we have the first two options as War Bond. Again, that has to be new money. Uh, you can use coupons there if you have them, and you might if you uh, got some of those in your account. But uh, generally speaking, you can't use any kind of uh, credits or anything like that with War Bonds. And that's part of why you're getting a discount. And with new ships, you might also be offered lifetime insurance, uh, which that is the case for these two here. The third option is a $45 option. We'll come back to that in just a minute. Let's talk about this thing. This is the concierge deal, and uh, this is exclusive only to concierge members. How do you get concierge? Well, you got to spend a thousand bucks or more USD on your account, and then you get that fancy concierge little badge there. And that gives you the privilege of spending even more money on the game. So uh, whatever creams your Twinkie, go ahead and do it. But honestly, I wouldn't get concierge for these deals because they're not that fancy. Uh, you uh, pretty much pay exactly the same price as you do for the War Bond editions of those same ships. The only difference is you do get a free skin tossed in. I don't know. If that really matters to you, that's great. If not, you can always contact me on Discord. I usually buy up a bunch of these skins and I'll sell them to you for a few bucks uh, or, a couple, or maybe a dollar or two more than what you were able to get them for here. So that you don't have to spend your thousand uh, dollars for the privilege. So let's go inside here and you can see that uh, we do have a, a few nice little things included here. We do have the skin, of course. Again, that's a concierge deal only. And so if you want just the skin, again, just uh, hit me up on Discord and I'll do my best to hook you up. Or if you're looking for this ship and it doesn't happen to be available anymore, I don't know if that's going to be the case. It's, uh, it seems to be a nice starter ship, so I think they will keep this around. Uh, but we'll see what happens in the future. You do get lifetime insurance on here as well, which is nice. And so if you were able to buy this with the skin, hey, more power to you uh, and get yourself some lifetime insurance, either as an LTI token to upgrade to something else uh, or just as a little LTI bagger to uh, get around the universe. Now, of course, there is uh, the other uh, war bond option available here for 40 bucks. This is going to be for anyone who's willing to spend new money. And you get life, uh, lifetime insurance on that as well. As you can see right there, you're going to get the extra free skin. But hey, it is what it is. And then if you're looking to just spend store credit to add to your already plethora of ships, then you can spend $45 USD. Oops, go ahead and click off of that. There we go. And yeah, you're getting a measly six months insurance on that. But I mean, whatever, this thing is going to be available in the game for probably pennies. 
um, probably not more than you know a couple of hundred thousand or maybe three or four hundred thousand UBC, which is not that hard to make these days. And so uh, if you just don't want to spend the 40 bucks or you know the store credit or new money or whatever, that's okay. Honestly, I, I don't know that it would be worth it unless you're a brand new player and you're going for that game package that I mentioned earlier. I think that might be worth it if this is the kind of ship that you enjoy. Uh, but that being said, you know what? Uh, if you can wait for it, just buy it in the game and uh, that way you can save a few bucks and uh, you can use that towards something else, right? So let's go ahead and jump into the game and uh, take a look at the exterior and the interior tour and uh, we'll wrap up with my final thoughts about whether I think this ship is worth it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with an exterior tour here very quickly because it's quite hot on aerial. And this ship is not going to have too many bills and whistles just because it is a bit of an entry-level ship, but there are a few nice little touches here and there that are pretty remarkable. So let's go ahead and get started with that big windshield up front. That's going to give the pilot a very nice field of view from left to right and also a little bit of a vertical slice up front to be able to see where they're going. That's a nice plus, especially since you're sitting a little bit higher uh, than most other ships. You're able to see fairly well. At least uh, it's something that I enjoy, but it might be different for you. Now on the front, we do have some lights. These two down here are auxiliary lights. These come on with the ship power. And you can press L to turn this main light on here, which actually provides some pretty good visibility in low light conditions. The sun is currently out on aerial, so not a big deal. But the fact that we can still see a nice bright beam is definitely a plus. And certainly Drake is very well known uh, for its utilitarianism. And so that's always nice to see from them. Now on the front here, we do have a couple of more features. We have a nice fuel port. As you know, refueling is now a part of the game, so that's where you're going to be able to do that. And then down here, we have a pair of size 1 CF117 laser repeaters. And these are mounted on size 2 gimbals, which you can take out for size 2 mounts. And you can put some CF227 badgers on there if you are so inclined. Moving around to the port side of the ship, there's not a whole lot going on. We do have access to various ship systems, subsystems, and components. Although none of this really opens up, so I imagine this is probably going to be for a future patch down the road at some point, hopefully. On the front of these big thrusters here, we do have some reverse thrusters. These provide a very minimal amount of reverse thrust, but they are there and they do work. On the port and starboard side of the ship, we do also have these main thrusters. These are VTOL thrusters or vertical takeoff and landing, and they can be manipulated by pressing the K key, as in Kilo, on your keyboard. And they're pretty powerful, so they're really nice for landing in tight spaces, and they do provide some good thrust. We do have some auxiliary thrusters here as well, one on each side, which do provide forward only thrust. And it's pretty much exactly the same on the starboard side as it is on the port side of the ship. On the very top, we do have some little stabilizing fins. These can uh, help to add a little bit of stability during atmospheric flight, but I don't imagine they're going to have that much difference on the flight model. At least I haven't experienced much. And then we do have a nice little interior here, which can be accessed via this ramp which can be opened and closed by this little panel on the side using the F key and your mouse. And we do have uh, buttons on both sides here, it looks like. So no matter which side you are on, you're able to uh, open and close this, which is a nice little touch for a little ship like this. Let's go ahead and head up the ramp and take a tour inside this little wonder of a ship. All right, everybody, so let's go ahead and get started with the exterior tour. Never mind that dead body. We're just going to use the panel on the starboard side of the ship here to close up this little ramp so we don't have any unexpected visitors during the tour. We do have a couple of windows here tinted yellow, so they're not going to be letting in too much light, but they're great for checking for inclement weather or any pirate activity outside before you venture out in your STV, which, by the way, is a bitch to park in here. And, of course, uh, you do want to make sure that you're very careful when you park this thing in here because I did actually get caught up on that end uh, between the vehicle, the wall, and the ramp, and I wasn't able to get out. Fortunately, the persistence is a lot better these patches than it was in previous patches and so I was able to come on back by flying my MSR here which is what you can see on the outside and why my dead body is there. All right, so we have this little uh, panel here. This is going to of course open and close our rear door, giggity. And we do have a little option for our light which is currently on. This is nice. It gives a uh, pretty decent uh, overall illumination to the garage here and the cargo area which does uh, make things a little bit easier to see. Now as I mentioned, I do have an STV back here. And this was uh, a pain in the butt to park in here. You pretty much have to get it in exactly this position so that you have space to walk back here and so that you can actually walk between the wall and the tires here. Uh, again, don't get caught on the other end there. Otherwise, you're going to have to backspace. Now, uh, this does also store four SCU of cargo. Of course, not at the same time as having the vehicle here. So you're going to have to make a choice of whether you want a vehicle or the cargo. And while I wouldn't recommend this ship explicitly for cargo running, uh, even as a brand new player ship, I think it's definitely a nice option to have that 4SCU here. 
And of course, uh, the, the nice selling point is that you do have uh, room for a vehicle. So you can take this thing and explore the ground whenever you land and then uh, put it back in here and take off and, and get going to wherever you got to go. And it's uh, definitely nice to have that option. On the starboard side here, once again, we do have some components of the ship available to us in these little uh, compartments that open up. And these are quite nice. They're uh, pretty straightforward to use. Again, I'm sure this is going to be a lot more useful once we're able to actually repair this stuff on the inside of the ship, which is going to be quite nice. But until then, it's uh, pretty much just uh, eye candy. Now, moving forward into the ship, we do have a little lavatory here. This is going to be our uh, toilet, as always. We do have a little shower there and a toilet combo, which you can access by pressing that button there. And hey, good news. Uh, this one's actually completely made out of polycarbonate and uh, and uh, some kind of plastic, it looks like. So your butt's not going to be super cold in the middle of the night when you got to wake up and uh, use the restroom in the middle of deep space. So that's good. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're a Corsair owner and you want a little reprieve from that, then hey, this, uh, this might not be a bad idea for you. Although, I don't know if I'd buy this just for the toilet. But that being said, we do have some options here. Unfortunately, somebody did rip out the lever for the shower. So uh, this room is uh, really only going to be good for taking a dump, at least for now, until uh, Drake uh, gets this uh, warrantied out for us. Uh, and then we do have a panel over here as well, which is nice. This is a, a nice little three button panel open and close lock, which is uh, important for those uh, late nights again. And uh, of course, the light as well, which is uh, really nice. And I've mentioned that in my videos in the past, even in ships like this from Drake, which I know they're meant to be utilitarian. They're, they're kind of ugly and they're not very striking visually, but they're very uh, dependable, very reliable and utilitarian ships that kind of just get the job done. It helps to make you feel at home a little bit more, which is really quite nice. We do have a bed here as well. Again, not the most comfortable thing. We've got yellow bars all over the place and insulation and wiring as is the custom for Drake Interplanetary. But you do have a little bed here uh, for you to rest. Over here, we do have uh, a nice little inventory system. Now, mind you, you can always just press I if you don't care about the whole immersion aspect of it. Uh, but you can simply just hold F here and press left mouse button. And again, that'll let you access the little closet there. And you can store a bunch of stuff in here uh, so that you don't have to drag it around with you, which is always quite nice. Other than that, there's not a whole lot else to see here. We can move forward into the bridge area. And uh, at the bridge here, we can see that we have that very nice windscreen that we saw on the outside. This is pretty cool. And uh, as you'll see when we sit down, you're not even able to rotate the camera all the way to the left or to the right in order to see really the edges of the windscreen there. So Drake did a really fantastic job here. We do have a little light here as well. So when it gets a little darker, you're still able to see your instrumentation. And again, that uh, function over form really does represent itself quite well here. We've got a few buttons up top there, but we'll take a look at that in just a little bit. We've got a few uh, systems on the wall here. And uh, over here, looks like we do have a flight computer from Bering. And this is also accessible from the panel outside. But again, I don't think that really opens. I think that's just kind of a thing to look forward to in the future. We have a little door panel here. And again, very similar to what we've seen in the rest of the ship. Open and close, lock and lights. So if we click on that, get a little bit of lighting in here. And uh, oh, actually that turned off the light. So the light was already on. We'll go ahead and click that again. Give an idea of what that looks like. And yeah, that's uh, pretty nice. Pretty good illumination there. We do have a light back here as well. And we have one up top. So that's quite nice. Looks like we have a couple of little eyebrow lights up here as well. So that's always nice to see. Other than that, we've got a little cubby here for a little bit of storage. We've got a place to put our rifle and uh, two spots for a sidearm here. I do like the lighting. I think it looks really nice. And uh, again, just very uh, utilitarian looking, but uh, that should be enough. This is uh, essentially a single person ship, so you really shouldn't have to worry about having additional storage. Uh, it's not like you're going to be lugging extra people around unless you've got some poor soul in the STV. And in that case, that is your business. Go ahead and sit down and check out the cockpit real quick here. This is really cool. It gives you a little ride to the top. Very nice. Closes the door behind you. And then you can see, as I was uh, saying before, from the outside, the view here is actually quite nice. And uh, as I mentioned, you can't really rotate the camera all the way around to even see the edges. There's my MSR uh, of the screen. I have a little eyebrow uh, window up here as well. The vertical uh, view is really quite nice. It is obstructed a little bit by the instrumentation up front, but not too bad. You've got a pretty good uh, eye out on all angles here, so you can kind of see where you're going. I think that's definitely a plus, especially for new people picking up a ship like this. Uh, definitely makes a big difference. Now we've got a uh, very similar instrumentation layout here to a lot of other Drake ships. Uh, we've got our uh, sort of uh, call out panel at the top here. This is going to give you some warning lights for different uh, things that might be wrong with your ship. So definitely good to keep an eye on that. And then we do have three MFDs here. Uh, I do like the asymmetry if you ask me, but uh, everybody's uh, kind of a little bit different. So if you don't like something that's asymmetrical and you're looking for something that's got, you know, two screens on the left, two screens on the right. Well, I don't know. 
this might not necessarily be uh, your cup of tea, but I think that looks, looks quite nice and uh, I think it really speaks to the way that Drake designs their ships. Of course, we have a 2D radar right in the middle there and we've got two MFDs over on the left, one on the right. And if you're brand new, of course, you can manipulate these and change them out to whatever you like. I'll just go ahead and set that to that for now. doesn't really matter. We do have a nice little throttle on the left-hand side and a center stick, rudder, petters, uh, rudder pedals down below. Geez, that's a mouthful. And we do have a keyboard here as well, which uh, is kind of cool. It's uh, lit really, really brightly here by the sun on Ariel, so it's a little overexposed, but that's okay. And uh, it does look like we have some uh, buttons and doodads and stuff like that. Most of the stuff is going to be down here, though. Um, you'll see that you have a quantum spool over here, which is quite nice. And everything else is actually very nicely detailed and... Um, all of the labels are really well done. They're very legible. Recording this in 1080p, and even then, it, it looks quite nice. So very good work on the textures on the inside. Now, not all of these are bound, and of course, I'm still going to complain about the fact that um, there is a text that appears when you hover over these. I really wish they got rid of this. This, this is one thing that really just kind of bothers me on the ships lately, and it's something that's been getting to me for quite some time now. And especially if they're going to go through the trouble of labeling everything, it would really be nice if we just kind of got rid of this. But I do understand that it is a part of the current UI system. And until we're able to get, uh, you know, everything in the building blocks and, and, and you know, all the new UI stuff, then that's pretty much what we're going to have to deal with. So that's going to be it for me. Uh, would I recommend the ship? You know what? Yeah, I would. But it depends on who you are. Uh, if you're a relatively new player and you're looking for a ship to kind of boot around town with and get a bunch of stuff done, then you know what? Uh, it's definitely a worthwhile ship, especially if you'll be picking this up for uh, the uh, well, with the game package for 51 bucks. That's not too bad. There's a lot of utilitarianism here coming from this particular vessel. You can put a vehicle in here. Of course, you can buy these in game as well. You don't have to purchase these online with real money. And uh, yeah, you can toss a vehicle in here and you can get around town and, and get a bunch of stuff done. You can do delivery missions. You can do cargo hauling and see if that's something that you enjoy. Uh, the combat is not that great in this thing. It's, uh, it's, it's got all size 1 components, and uh, it's only got a pair of size 1 weapons on the front. So you can't put size 2s there, but again, that would have to be fixed. And for a new player, that might not be ideal. But overall, as a general ship, I think I would recommend it, but only for new players. And probably only as part of that uh, holiday deal with the... Uh, uh, with uh, with the, the game package and everything. So if you're getting that, that's not too bad. But if you're somebody that's a little bit more established, honestly, I'd probably wait for this thing to come out. Or if you want to get it with store credit, melt it down later and then buy it with UEC. I guess that works too. If, you know, whatever creams your Twinkie, whatever makes you happy. But uh, if you're a little bit more of an established player, I think that there are other ships that are a little bit bigger and better than this. And uh, the price isn't too far off. Although if you're buying with uh, real money, Certainly $40 is not a stretch for something that provides you this much utility. So, you know what? Make the decision for yourself. But uh, those are my recommendations. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and becoming a subscriber with notifications turned on. I do uh, upload videos weekly here on YouTube and uh, certainly does help the video and the channel grow. So if you did enjoy, thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciate you being here and for uh, seeing my videos. Now, uh, we do also have a Discord there. The uh, link will be down in the description for you. So if you want to go check that out, come on uh, by and say hello. And uh, we'd be happy to have you there. It's discord.io or discord.gg forward slash SSP gaming. If the GG link doesn't work, just do the uh, discord for uh, discord.io forward slash SSP gaming in your browser and uh, you'll get redirected there. Thank you so very much for watching again, everybody. That'll do it for me. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you in the next video.